to come up do you so let's put some on the ground for you people enjoying hers. Oh, no. It's Monday and I thought I would film a vlog about uh, just a normal day. Just a normal run-of-the-mill day today. I don't have to do any editing because I have moved my a video schedule for this channel to once every two weeks just for the time being whilst I get a few things out of the way. March is a really really busy month and I'm going to be doing daily vlogs in April so I've got a bit of a day off from editing but as is typical of um, children when you have a day without having to do one thing uh, we have a man down. Uh, Phoebe is at home from school today she just wasn't feeling well this morning and we're not sure what's up with her she's got a bit of a cough She's not feeling right, she hasn't got a temperature, she hasn't got COVID, but she's not quite well enough to face the world. So she's on the sofa watching a film and I've just been to the post office. So it turned out to be a lovely sunny day after a grey start. I've just been down and given the chickens their seed and I wanted to show you something I found in the, in the nesting box. So. Uh, we've had a bit of a problem the last three or four days. One of our chickens, we're not sure which one, it's either Hey Hey or uh, Cloud, is laying rubber eggs. Now initially we thought, we, we feed them uh, fresh vegetables every afternoon after they've had plenty of time to eat their layers pellets which has got all the nutrients they need. And we've been feeding them a lot of spinach and that can cause rubbery eggs because it has a lot of uh, a type of acid in it which can s prevent them from absorbing calcium which is what they need a lot of to produce the hard egg so here is a normal egg <laughs> normal egg and then this is what we've been getting for about the last four days from one of our chickens can you see it's like a it's like a joke egg now this is a perfectly formed egg in there but the shell hasn't formed properly um, and I wouldn't, you could eat them, but it's probably not the best of idea because the shell does form a protective barrier against things like bacteria. So now that I've shown you this, I shall probably um, get rid of it. But yeah, I'm a bit worried. As a one-off, we weren't too concerned. But given that this has been happening for a little while, it is a bit concerning. So we'll keep an eye on it over the next few days. And if it continues to happen, we might need to take them to our vet, but we're not entirely sure which chicken is doing it, so we're gonna to have to be watching them closely to work it out. But just in case you've never seen a rubber egg, um, that's what they look like, like rubber eggs. Weird, isn't it? 
This is a pretty old rucksack. I very rarely use it anymore. But it was perfect for my quick walk to the post office. I'm going to secretly show you something. Don't tell anyone. a surprise for Lilia's birthday at the end of the month. One of my lovely friends, Ali, up in Scotland, sent me a lovely box full of Rowies the other day otherwise known as butteries, which are a Scottish sort of roll made with salt and lard and other, <laughs> other terrible things. They're surprisingly not too heavy on calories. Um, and because it, they are best eaten fresh, I froze a load of them. And they're also lovely when you heat them through. So I defrost them in the toaster and then I have a lovely rowie to eat. Some people eat them with butter on, but that's just like adding butter to butter. I'm going to go and have this and a cup of tea. And then I'm going to be getting on with doing my show notes because I've got to film a podcast tomorrow on my other, for my other channel, for my knitting and crochet channel. I'm long overdue a podcast and I've got a lot of notes to make about it. So I really enjoy doing it. So I'm going to have a little something to eat and a cup of tea and then I'm going to crack on with that. Now that I've finished my rowie, I thought I'd show you this. So quite a while ago, my friend Sarah and I did a swap. And as part of that, she sent me the most beautiful candle and I finished it. So I was going to order myself another one and then I wanted to get one as a gift as well. I'm just going to have a slurp of tea. Oh, I needed that. So the company is called Vegan Bunny. That is right, isn't it? Yeah, Vegan Bunny. I'll put a link to them underneath. And they sell soy and natural wax candles. And their main sort of concept is that they are plastic free, carbon neutral, and they have a reduced marketing concept as well. I believe they are on Instagram, but I haven't actually looked. And so the box arrived and I was so impressed with it, but not only that, their website shares all they know about their journey into plastic free packaging so it's not something they try to keep hidden and um, you know not share what they've put the time into learning about so there's a whole page on their website which I'm going to be really looking into because they're a UK based company and I do need to find some more plastic free packaging for my own shop so I'll definitely be having a look at their advice from what they've learned Anyway, this little box arrived, so it's cute enough. It says, this box has been sustainably delivered. Uh, and then it says, your goodies have, were produced with energy supplied by Ecotricity, Britain's greenest energy company and the only electricity in the UK registered with the Vegan Society. So I haven't even opened the box. I'm already feeling good about myself. And true to word, it's completely plastic free in here. So they've got plastic free um, bubble wrap alternative which is just as satisfying when you pull it apart. There's a little, there was a little bit of dried flour in there and then it's got their card and a little discount code for me to use next time. So it was all just really lovely first impressions. Now this is the hard bit because I can show you but you can't smell them. <laughs> You'll just have to take my word for it. It's not sponsored, by the way. This is just something I bought. So this is the one that I um, was given, was given by my friend Sarah, uh, and that I wanted to get another one of. But actually, I have bought this one as a gift, and I got myself a different one. But I think I am going to go back and use my discount code and get myself another one of these ones because I really did love it. It is rose. What was it rose blossom? It's in this beautiful little tin. And the tin of the original one, I've managed to get all the labels off so I can use it as a little tin for holding stuff or I can pour some wax in to make another little candle. 
It's just very simple on the inside and you'll have to take my word for it that it smells absolutely gorgeous. I love that scent. And then the other one I got to try is chai latte because chai latte is my drink of choice when we go out for a hot drink. And I'll, I won't show you because it does, well, I'm going to give it a sniff so I'm going to open it anyway. Oh, and it really does smell exactly like a chai latte. It's gorgeous. So I'm going to be burning this one uh, to see how that smells. But they, they uh, from my experience with this one, they burn really well um, and they emit a really lovely smell they're, they're, at which lasts burn after burn. So I'm really pleased with it. I'm going to wrap it back up so I can have fun unwrapping it again later. So the patient has requested a egg sandwich, which is very easy to fulfill, given that we've got a lot of eggs that aren't rubber. I'm going to have some leftover sort of paella type stuff that I made yesterday. Uh, it's a very simple recipe with just normal rice, peppers, smoked paprika, peas and saffron. It's really lovely. Just gonna have a little bit. Dan had also bought something for us to share, which is like a a, bee, a Spanish uh, bean type thing, but he realized when he got it home, it's got chorizo in it and he's pescatarian. So I'm gonna have to try a little bit of this as well. It looks quite nice. And I've got some corn pieces here as well, which I'm gonna heat up with it. It should all be very tasty. things I'm doing today as part of my show notes which are now done other than this last bit is to do my first section on my very first collaboration on my knitting and crochet channel uh, with Skillshare which is really exciting obviously it's not part of this channel so I'm in no way selling them <laughs> or anything like that here but on my next episode I'm going to be talking a lot about the collaboration I'm doing with them over the next six months and it's so fun it's one of the things I keep putting off because it's so fun. It just doesn't feel like I should be like getting to do it as part of what I do, do as part of my income. Uh, so I'm just uh, going through some of the classes that I've got saved. I've already completed a class this month that, that I'll be talking about. It was all around meditative, meditative drawing and I just so loved it. I'm not going to show you what I've done because I want to save that to share on my uh, knitting and crochet podcast. On little drops of wonderful so i'm having a really nice time writing my notes for that uh, phoebe is on her ipad she's been on her ipad for too long now the fire is lit to keep her warm and i said i'd go and sit with her to watch a film but i just really want to get these notes done because i want to film tomorrow dan's upstairs working he has recently uh, been to the doctors and discovered that he has high blood pressure he does tend to have higher blood pressure anyway so he is having to wear a 24 hour blood pressure monitor, which he's got on now and he's not happy about it. 
just walking around moaning about it. I can get it. He's gonna. It's not so bad in the day, but he has to sleep with it, and it just goes off randomly all the time. <laughs> so I don't think he's gonna get a very good night's sleep. I don't think any of us are gonna get a very good night's sleep because it does whir and make noises. So, um, but he's upstairs working at the moment. So I'm gonna crack on with my Skillshare notes and get these blinking show notes finished. Do you wanna just, I've got some basic yarn here, Phoebe, you could practice with. Nice. Do you like that one? You'll get a nice a frog cut. Yeah, but you're going to make a square to start with. You can't start with a frog. Okay, I'll get a hook. Put some moisturiser on my hands. Phoebe's feeling a little bit better. We don't know what was up with you really, do we? But she is feeling better and that's the main thing. But she's been asking me for quite a while if I would teach her to crochet. So seeing as she's got nowhere else to be, <laughs> I thought I would try and get you started. She said, I said to her she had to come off of her iPad and she said she wouldn't be bored if she had crochet, which is the story of my life really, I'm never bored. So we're gonna start off with a chain, okay? okay. But the main thing when you're learning to crochet is not so much the you crochet. You have the perfect frog green color. Yeah, she wants to ultimately make a frog, but that's not what we're starting with. We're starting with a granny square. Are you watching? Yeah. I've started you off with a slip knot, and you can hold it like a knife. A knife? Like that, yeah. like how you'd hold a knife. Or you can hold it as you would hold a pencil, okay? I hold it as you would hold a knife. So you have your thumb where the numbers is, yeah? Yeah and keep your thumb and finger of this hand to secure it so it's not flapping around all over the place. And what you're going to do is, you're going to grab the yarn yeah. and put it through the loop. That and looks that's, easy. Hang on, and that's made a chain. Grab the yarn and put it through the loop. Now it eventually, easy. eventually what you're going to have to do is move your fingers up a bit. Because if you keep them down here, it's going to be wanging about and it's going to get harder but it's holding the yarn in your left hand that you have to master. I made this bean sprout. <laughs> so having a break and my hand hurts. You've done make... very well. You've made the first round of a granny square. I don't know how you people do it. <laughs> <laughs> Practice. You did really good. You've done the first round of Pain a granny relief. square. That's how you do it. <laughs> You've been, I think you're a natural. My hand feels like it's going to fall off out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you need to lie down after one round of crochet. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> I'm really tired after that. <laughs> it is absolutely freezing today. I wasn't expecting it to be this cold. It says it's about six degrees Celsius. Oh, it feels much colder than that. Uh, I've just been out sorting the chickens out with their vegetables and getting some more wood for the fire. I was really surprised at how cold it is. Anyway, I've tried to do some laundry and realised I've run out of fabric softener. So I'm going to have to go and dash to the supermarket, which I really don't want to do at this point. I've just finished doing my show notes and uh, so I'm all ready to film tomorrow, so that's good. Uh, Phoebe has almost done a second row of her granny square but she got a bit frustrated so we put it to one side for a minute and uh, yeah right I'm going to dash out now get it over and done with and it'll be home to get dinner ready.
This is a frozen homemade tikka sauce that I made a while ago. I'm going to heat this up and use and use up some vegetables that we have hanging around the fridge. And I might put a bit of corn in as well for me and Dan to have a curry for our dinner. And I think I'm going to do it with some potatoes, which I'll spice with a bit of garam masala and stuff like that. The girls are just going to have some potatoes and uh, Phoebe's going to have vegetable nuggets and Lilia's going to have chicken nuggets, which to her is like quite nice comfort food because she doesn't get to have them often. And she took her last mock at Zams today, so she's feeling very happy. So it's a bit of a mismatch because we haven't done any meal planning for the week yet. So we're going to sit down in a minute and sort that out. But it's kind of nice to use stuff up that needs using up. This is a big deal and a big purchase. I um, thought long and hard about this and I bought myself a MacBook Air. Now I took a lot of advice for some very clever and very knowledgeable other podcasters and some vloggers as well about what they use, what they would recommend, what, they, what the best thing would be for what I need it for. And in the end, it came down to what I could afford, basically. So I saved up for quite a long time from the money that I make from making my videos. And I eventually got enough to get myself a MacBook Air. I would have liked, it's double the memory of my current iPad, which is brilliant, which means I could be working on more than one video at a time. And I still have my iPad for working on a video too. Uh, it's completely new to me. I've never had one before. So um, I've got to get used to how it works, how, getting files onto it works and everything like that. So I really need to sit down and have a play around with it, which I was going to do today. I'll actually talk to you rather than being just a disembodied voice, even though I'm sitting directly underneath the light. So it's gonna be really unflattering. Maybe I'll just sit really far away. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting stuck into it, but it's completely new to me. Um, and I'm hoping it's gonna make my life with editing videos a lot easier. Uh, and a bit more streamlined than it currently is. Um, but that, that said, my non-streamlined way of doing things is something I've kind of got down to a fine art, so I think I'm gonna, it's gonna take a little while to adjust. But I'm hoping to have a play with that later this evening. I'm just in the middle of cooking dinner for everyone now, and then I'm gonna have a lovely bath this evening before a nice hot milk and a couple of my special biscuits, my McVitie's caramel biscuits. And Dan and I are going to watch the final of the uh, pottery throwdown, the Great British Pottery Throwdown. Right, let's go and see how those potatoes are doing. Or well, maybe, oh, I've got a few minutes, maybe I could play with this. Yeah. Can't even get it out of the box, that's not, that's not a good start, is it? I thought it would be fun to film here because the bathroom's behind me but my camera is having some serious focusing issues on me. I think it's because it's such, well it's dark now and I've got um, the overhead lights on to try and get a bit of light because that seems to work better than no overhead lights. So hopefully I'm in focus. I'm going to go and have a lovely hot bath now and I'm going to watch videos about how to make videos 
on iTunes on a Mac. I'm very familiar with iTunes, but I've used it for years now on my iPad and before that my phone. Um, but on a Mac, it is going to be a different kettle of fish. So I am going to go and find some videos of people who know what they're talking about and find out how to do it. So who knows? I'll put on the screen whether the video you are watching now, which will be a week from today, is made using my new MacBook, or if I had to resort to my trusty old iPad, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> so I'm gonna go and get in the bath and I'm going to relax for a bit and then have my hot milk and my special biscuits. And I'll see you again in a couple of weeks time by which point it will nearly be April and nearly time for daily vlogs. Cause I can't keep my mind off things I'd be better off to leave behind. Gotta be careful not to get stuck. And so I walk and I keep on walking. So the shoes I wear the road. I made this so far. That is amazing, Phoebe. Thank you. You've done such a good job. You picked it up so quickly. Yeah. Can I the end? Or the road?